All right, welcome back. We're continuing on doing some extra bells and whistles on OLS. In particular, uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is doing some post regression tests. Uh, so, you know, as you're familiar, once you're done uh, running a regression, you're not quite done yet. You, and, you know, one thing that you can do is you can look at the regression table, look at the significance tests on those coefficients and what their size is and the magnitude. Uh, but there are other things that we might want to check after the regression is run. So that's something that we're going to do uh, in this video. Uh, now, the first thing we're going to do is, some, is uh, actually we're going to do robust standard errors. This is my, something you might have learned about in your class, and it's a pretty standard thing to be done in economics. Uh, R does it a little bit differently from most other packages. Most packages will have a robust standard error option on the regression command itself, but that's not uh, the way that R does it. The way that R does it is it will allow you to sort of uh, present the model with robust standard errors after you have already run it. Uh, so I've already loaded in with foreign, and I've already loaded in with foreign and Stargazer and our wage one data that we've been working with. Uh, I'm going to add a new package. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add in the package uh, sandwich. And what the sandwich package does is it helps you implement sandwich standard errors, which is another name for robust standard errors, heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. So let's go ahead uh, and bring in a regression model, pretty straightforward regression model we've been using for the past couple of videos, model three right there, which regresses wage on education, tenure, gender, and marital status. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that model, okay? Uh, and then we're going to on to add robust standard errors to it. And the way we're going to do it is with the COEF test command which is basically just going to represent the results of that regression with robust standard errors. I want to do a COEF test, which includes robust standard errors in. So I'm going to do a COEF test, and I'm just going to pop in our model there, model three. Okay. And then I'm going to tell it what kind of variance covariances I want. What kinds of standard errors do I want you to estimate? Uh, and I'm going to do it with VCOV HC. All right. Uh, which is going to give heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. That's Stanford's variance covariance matrix uh, that is heteroscedasticity consistent. That's how you can remember that. It will also pop it up for you like it's doing right here. Uh, now, if I do this, it will represent the summary of that table, but this time it's got uh, standard errors that are robust to heteroscedasticity. Uh, we can run this, of course, through Stargazer. We do that, now we get a nicer looking table. And let's go ahead and put that next to the original model so that we can look at both of them at once. So now we have a two column table here. On the left, we have uh, just model three by itself regularly. And then on the right, we have the same model, but with heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. You can see that all the coefficients are exactly the same, uh, but the standard errors have changed a little bit. We have 0.047 over here on the left, 0.059 over here on the right, and similarly down the line. All right, so that's robust standard errors. Another different kind of standard error you might want to get is clustered standard errors. Clustered standard errors are something that you use typically uh, when the sampling is done based on group, uh, or you might expect that there's a correlation between, this, between the error terms within a group. Uh, now, the, no, no, nothing in this particular data set that we have here is particularly well set up to do this. So I'm just going to pick a variable at random to cluster over, uh, and that is going to be whether or not you're in a major metropolitan statistical area. Maybe uh, errors are more similar in the areas and without, right? Uh, so all we got to do for this is the same thing with COEF test. Uh, so we had robust standard errors before. Now we're going to do clustered standard errors with COEF test. This time, instead of VCOV HC, we're going to do VCOV CL, uh, which is going to allow for cluster, right? The CL for cluster. Uh, and we're going to tell it what cluster we're interested in. And we're going to say that we want to cluster over the uh, SMSA variable from the wage one data set. If I do this, it will once again provide for me the uh, regression table, but this time with the standard errors that are clustered by SMSA. Uh, once again, we can feed this into Stargazer. Uh, in fact, let's put all three of our models together. Uh, so we have the two that we already had. Uh, and let's tack on our one with the clustered standard errors and run that. So we can see all three of them together. Uh, and of course, the coefficients are the same in all of them. It is just the standard errors that is changing from column to column. This line's a little long. Let's go ahead and split it onto two just for simplicity's sake. All right. So we have done robust standard errors. We've done clustered standard errors. 
Uh, what else are we going to be able to do? Uh, well, one thing we can do is test for heteroscedasticity. Right? We did robust uh, standard errors, but maybe we want to test for that heteroscedasticity. Uh, we can do this with the broish pagan test that you might have learned about in class. That's a pretty standard test for this. Uh, the broish pagan test is in another package, the LM uh, test package. Uh, so we load in the LM test package, and that will include the BP test command. Uh, so we just have to, let's go ahead with our original model. We did all this stuff with robust standard errors. Did we even really need to do this? Uh, let's run the Broish Pagan test to find out. Let's just do BP test of our model three. Okay, we run that. Uh, and we can see that we can strongly reject the null in this case, uh, suggesting that maybe, yeah, we do uh, want to include some robust standard errors here. All right, that's the Broch Pagan test. But of course, there's not, that's not the only test that you might run after running your regression. Uh, another tip, common test to run is to do a joint test of the significance of multiple variables at once. Right? You can test whether a single coefficient is statistically significant by just looking at the regression table. It will give you, you know, the stars for the test that that coefficient is equal to zero. But what if we want to test multiple variables at once? That takes an F test. And we can do the F test. Uh, with the linear hypothesis command, which is in yet another package in the AER package. So if we do library AER, okay, load that in. Uh, now we can do a linear hypothesis test. Uh, so we want to do an F test of significance, okay? Uh, so let's just start with doing one variable. So it's just linear hypothesis with a capitalized H there. We're doing it of model three, right? Feeding that model we've already estimated in there. Uh, we want to do a test. I mean, we have to tell it what we're testing. Uh, let's go ahead and test if education is equal to zero. Okay, that's the test that we're doing. And then what type of test are we doing? We are doing an F test. All right, so if we do that, it will spit out. Okay, here's the F statistic from the test that the coefficient on education is equal to zero. Here's the uh, p-value uh, from that statistic. Uh, if we go, it's got three stars. If we go back up and check. Um, well, it's got three stars in, in this coding. The three stars means that it's significant at the 0.1 uh, significance level, which is pretty good. So we should uh, be good there. What if we want to test multiple variables at once? Well, all we got to do uh, is make that this part right here where we're saying what we're testing into a, a vector of things that we're testing. So wrap that in a C. And let's put it in a second. Let's test if education and uh, female are both zero. Okay, so what is this a test of? This is a test with the null hypothesis that the coefficient on education and the coefficient on female are both zero. This is going to be rejected if either of them are not zero or if both of them are not zero. So if we do this test, we now get a, an F test of both of the joint significance of those two variables. And that's, of course, we strongly reject. Uh, from that, we can uh, continue on doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Let's say we, we, we can go ahead and test everything in the model. Why not? Uh, and if we test education is zero, female is zero, uh, and tenure is zero, and uh, what else did we have in there? Uh, and married is zero. If we do this, we get an F statistic, 74.945. Now, if you recall, uh, if I, we look back at our model itself, the F statistic on the whole model is 74.95, exactly what we had, which makes sense, right? The F statistic for the whole model that's reported in a lot of regression tables is just the joint significance test that all the coefficients on the right-hand side variables are zero at the same time. Of course, we reject that. This particular F test is pretty much always rejected unless your model's really bad. Okay, that's the basics of some of the, uh, some of the starting uh, post-regression tests that we can do and how we can get uh, different kinds of covariance matrices for our regression, like robust standard errors or clustered standard errors. All right, uh, in the next video, we're going to be doing some more post-regression stuff, particularly with plotting. Uh, so that's going to be good, and we'll check the value of our regressions in some plots. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye.